K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. This is J.D. and Stacy with K98 Talk. We're here to talk to you about TPA. You may have called it Fast Track, TPA, or Trade Authority. Whatever it is called, it is a terrible idea and is coming up for a vote as early as June 11th. Barack Obama is negotiating the Trans-Pacific Partnership under an unprecedented veil of secrecy. Our congressmen who view it are threatened with legal action if they disclose details of the documents to the American public. Fast Track or Trade Promotion Authority, if passed, will prevent Congress from making amendments, debating the provisions, and allow passage of trade agreements with a simple majority. There is no conservative case for Fast Track Trade Promotion Authority. Our systems of checks and balances demands that Congress weigh and debate trade agreements, demand that Congress does their job. For information about Trade Promotion Authority and what it really means, visit coalitionforastrongamerica.com and then call your congressman and demand they vote no on TPA when it comes to the floor of the House. This has been a public service announcement by J.D. and Stacy of K98 Talk. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, welcome to the face. Welcome to the face of the new democracy. Tell us that just to admit a mistake. We'll pay an awful election just to those who will take. Attorney General's lying even while we're It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is Friday. We have finally made it. The weekend is upon us. Now, um, as you heard from the promo, TPA, TAA, TCIP, TSA, who gives a crap, too many acronyms to keep up with, is still afoot. Um... In, in an interesting development, and I'm, I'm starting to wonder if there wasn't some shenanigans behind the scenes, um, the, the, the TPA portion had passed, but there were three separate initiatives that had to pass for all of this stuff to get to Obama's uh, desk. And TPA did pass, but just barely. The TAA, however, was completely blown out of the water. So I'm wondering, because it seems odd... That the GOP would support TPA and then suddenly completely scuttle the TAA. So I'm wondering if there weren't some shenanigans going on there. At least that's kind of what I want to hope. Because here's the thing. I'm thoroughly confused right now, just to be completely honest. For the first time in my life, I'm about to utter words that I never thought I would say. I am on the same side as Nancy Pelosi when it comes to TPA, T- TAA, TPP, down with OPP, whatever the hell else they want to call this thing. Because it, it, it drives me insane to actually have to think that Nancy Pelosi and I are actually on the same side of an issue. It makes me wonder if maybe I'm a little off somewhere, but I know that I'm not because I've done the research and we're we're aligned with the Coalition for a Strong America, and they've done even more research than I have, and TPA, TPP, TAA, and OPP really, really bad for everything. So, the good news is, for the moment, 
we have a delaying action in place because in order for everything to move forward, the TAA, the TPA, and the TPP all have to pass. And that, of course, still leaves us down with OPP. I know, I keep doing that over and over again. I'm sorry, I think it's amusing. Probably not to anybody else, but hey, it's my show. So, um, yeah, just go away. <laughs> just kidding. Really, don't go away. A lot of you have just now started to listen. I don't want to completely scare you off. Um, now, before we get too far into it, because I do have a few things I'd like to talk about when it comes to TPA, TPP, and TAA, um, at this point, I do want to take a moment just to remind everybody of all the different places you can find this particular show, and that would be, um, for one, Spreaker. It's available through K98Talk.com. It's also available through K98Talk.com's TuneIn channel. This show is available in podcast form in the following places as well. Our Spreaker page, it is available through SoundCloud as a podcast. It is also available through Stitcher, and it is available on iHeartRadio. Oh, I, al- I always forget this one. And I don't know why, because it's honestly one of the coolest ones uh, that we have. This show has its own app. So if you have a mobile device and it is an Android device, no matter what, you can always have this show with you. If you go to the Android market and you simply search America Off the Rails in quotation marks, it will pull up the app. You can download it. You can take this show anywhere you ever want to go. And that will include the newest show that will be joining the America Off the Rails lineup America Off the Rails, the Roundhouse Edition, which will be launching hopefully at some point later this month. We are still ironing out some of the details, so it may get pushed back to some point in July, because a lot of us didn't expect to be as embroiled in this TPA, TPP, uh, TAA fight as we are. So uh, a lot of us have been actively engaged, we're actively on social media, trying to spread the word about what a terrible idea this is. And again, I'm just completely flabbergasted that for once I'm on the same side as a lot of Democrats. Which honestly scares me, because at this point I'm wondering how many Republicans are for this only because the Democrats are against it. Because that's kind of the way our politicians work anymore. Well, if this side thinks it's a good idea... We have to kill it. And if that side thinks it's a bad idea, we have to pass it. It's like, it's like this game of who's got the football. You know, I mean, and it's just, it's one of those things where we're the ones stuck in the middle and we're like, hey, this is a really, really, really terrible idea. You do realize that from the little bit we're able to garner from it, because you won't let us see the damn thing, that basically you're telling us that we could be under the authority of the world court. Remember when they said that wouldn't happen with NAFTA? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Yeah, I remember, because, you know, that was in, that was that was one of the, 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 the talking points. Oh, don't worry, we'll never be under the world court when it comes to NAFTA. You ever notice how they've changed everything on the commercials? Uh, notice, like, on the McDonald's commercials anymore, it doesn't tell you uh, beef provided by, from um, California or, um, what the hell else is another good state for beef? You know, Texas, Oklahoma. No, it's... 100% pure North American beef, which means it can be coming from Canada, could be coming from here, America, or it could be coming from Mexico. Uh, dollars to pesos, it's coming from Mexico, which is one of the reasons why the World Court has stepped in and said, we can't have this country origin of labeling thing because it's detrimental to the rest of the world when they're trying to sell their products because nobody wants to buy the stuff that says it came from Mexico. Well, duh. Have you seen the way they process things in Mexico? Nobody wants... No, okay, in the words of uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, seriously. Ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, come on, you know, when, that's what, that's the reason we started the, the label of origin movement in the first place was because it, we had all these big outbreaks of like E. coli and everything else from stuff that were coming up from Mexico that were being pulled from the fields after the same people that were pulling it from the fields were using the fields to relieve themselves. And it was causing people to get deathly sick, which is why we started the whole push to have country of origin labeling. So that people would have the option of knowing, hey, you know, this was made here, this was made there. Feel free to make your choice. See, that's the thing that I don't understand. Everybody always wants to talk about how they're pro-choice. When it comes to one particular issue, the rest of the time, they are completely anti-choice. They don't want you to be able to pick where your food comes from. They don't want you to be able to pick how much money you spend on your insurance. They don't want any of that. They want you to have basically a single choice. 
because if you have the single choice, then the government can maintain the control. And I submit to you today that this is the driving force behind TPA, TPP, and TAA, and why the government is all, all over everybody's OPP. Okay, I know. I'll stop. I promise. Maybe. At least for a little bit. But I, I can't help it. I mean, how many stupid freaking acronyms do we need for something that we might as well just say is a steaming pile of crap? Because that's what this amounts to, is a steaming pile of crap. They're trying to spoon feed us a bunch of crap just like they did with Obamacare. And now we have John Pelosi. Uh, thank you, bar, bar, uh, Barbed Wire Satire, because I keep using that. I have to tell you, I, I basically, on Sunday, uh, JD was sick. So I got the call at like maybe 8 o'clock the night before that I was going to need to fill in for him. And I got sent the material because, you know, they do that whole weekend update thing, which comes from barbed wire satire. And I honestly had to read through my part of it three times because every time I got to the part where it said John Pelosi, I could not stop laughing. I'm like, I'm supposed to be emulating a news reporter here, so I can't just bust out laughing every time I say John Pelosi. The scary part is it's not funny anymore because it's true. It was funny Sunday. It's not funny anymore. John Boner, yes, I said it, Boner, has specifically and totally turned into the male version of Nancy Pelosi. If I didn't know better, I would think the uh, wicked witch of the Democratic Party had found a way to possess our speaker. Um, at least that would be one thing that would explain the odd and aberrant behavior. Because, <laughs> come on. Think about this for a second. Can we just be honest for just one second? When has President Obama ever supported anything that has restricted his power? The fact that he wants this should tell everybody what a terrible, terrible idea it is. And yet, and yet, the only thing that stopped us from having it today was that all of a sudden there was all this support to not pass the TAA. Which does not make any sense to me, because if you have to pass all three to get it all done, why did the same people that were voting for TPP and TPA suddenly say no to TAA? Did they get confused about the acronyms, maybe? Did they forget that they actually wanted this thing? Or were there some of them that <coughs> told the president they were going to vote for them simply to be able to actually <laughs> see what was in it? But what I don't understand is if that was their ploy, how is it we don't have more information about what's actually in it? And don't forget, you know, make no mistake, this was supposed to be the most transparent administration ever. Anybody else remember that? I remember that. I remember, and I talked about this with Patrick yesterday, uh, Patrick Frenari, the author of uh, Commoner Sense, uh, Working Person's Guide to America. Uh, who is an, the author of that book and actually spent the entire show with me yesterday. I talked to him about, you know, how opposed I was to Obama, and I fought him tooth and nail every step of the way in the 2008 elections. I told people I didn't think it was going to be a good choice. I told people why I didn't think it was going to be a good choice. At that point, I wasn't as vocal as I am now, but that was honestly what started pushing me in that direction, was when I realized that the American people just honestly do not pay attention to a damned thing anymore. They pay attention to reality TV, they pay attention to who's got the biggest best TV on the block, who's got the biggest house, and who's driving the best car. Other than that, they could really give a crap less. And I say they in general because the number of us that are paying attention is beginning to grow. And I have to give a big shout out to some folks before I forget who have helped bring the attention to this that it deserves when it comes to TPA, TPP. And that, of course, would be JD and Stacy right here from K98 Talk, who have been knee-deep in the fray, especially uh, Miss Stacy Lennox, who has been all over it uh, through social media every single day, wading through it, running the social media to, to get the word out that this is a terrible idea. So big shout-out to those folks. And, of course, the uh, Coalition for a Strong America, one of our newest uh, sponsors and partners here on K98 Talk, and also Red Nation Rising. Uh, because without them, without those people trying as hard as they've been trying, and all of the others of you that are out there, and I know you're out there, unfortunately, a lot of you have not made it under my radar because we're, we're focusing on the folks that are actually here and pushing to make a difference. But thanks to each and every one of you that honestly at this point have given us a small victory. Now the problem is Speaker Boner, instead of accepting defeat, has pushed for a reconsideration. 
which is supposed to occur Monday. So now, for those of you that are pushing, that are calling your congressman, that are emailing, that are writing, that are whatever it is that you're doing to get their attention, short of violence, just want to make sure I clarify that, no violence, not from this guy, I never told you to do that, so don't even try it, but for all of you that are doing what you can to try to make a difference, keep the pressure up. Monday is it. If we can hold the line through Monday, we win. If we falter, if we fail, I'm telling you this is going to be the beginning of the end of this nation. You can call me a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory person at this point all you want. At this point, I will proudly wear that because I am telling you this will be the death of our nation. Think of all the things that have gone sideways since we passed NAFTA. Look at all the people that were for NAFTA. Look at everything it's caused now. How many businesses have we lost in America because of NAFTA? You know what NAFTA was? NAFTA was our way, our stupid asinine way of trying to compete with the EU. We don't need to compete with the EU. They're slowly destroying themselves from the inside because they can't figure out what the hell it is they want to do or be. We don't need to compete with that. We need to remain who we are. We have always been, always been, the beacon of free industry to the rest of the world, the beacon of freedom to the rest of the world, and if these things pass, that light will fade. It will fade. You mark my words, it will fade. And when it goes out, at some point, and I'm not the first person that said this, but I pro and I probably won't be the last either, at some point, when that light goes out, when we stop being the hope to the rest of the world, we will stop also being the hope to ourselves. And when we go that dark, what happens, and it will happen, will make Germany look like Boy Scouts. Because our economy will crumble. Because we will lose every captain of industry we have. They will move their jobs to somewhere where they can afford better labor for less money. And people that will basically do the same work that we do for two-thirds less money. And that's what this is. This is a sellout to big business. Anybody who wants to tell me otherwise can suck it. And yes, I am being very adamant today because I'm angry about this. I have been angry about this since Sunday, but I've been focused up until now. So I've put the anger to good use, but now it's just time to be honest. If this goes sideways, we are done done this country as we know it will be done all right so i've got to go ahead and get uh, set to take a really quick break because i've actually ran a little bit longer than i intended to I've got somebody looking sideways at me over here come on it's not that bad i'm only a couple minutes off uh, i'm still getting the evil eye so all right so stew me okay look just just hush all right, so at this point, folks, we will be back here in just a couple minutes. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. And again, as a reminder, it's Friday. We've made it, but the battle isn't over. Stay vigilant through Monday, folks. We've got to get this done. This is Misty, owner of Waxit Studio in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm here to talk to you about a skincare product called Theramedics. Theramedics has a wonderful line of products from anti-aging to hyperpigmentations all the way to acne. In fact, everyone at some point in our lives is affected by acne. Acne can cause a great deal of embarrassment and anxiety. And in order to prevent and help other people, I have tapped into this wonderful product called Theramedics. Visit my website at www.prettyskindeep.com. Again, that's www.prettyskindeep.com. Now's the time to get involved. The Coalition for a Strong America is the only conservative grassroots organization meeting with congressmen and high-level staffers on a regular basis. Stephanie Scruggs, co-chairman, is concerned about the upcoming TPA vote. First of all, what you need to know is that Fast Track TPA is a bill before Congress where Congress gives their power to negotiate international trade agreements and treaties to the president. She recommends contacting your representative and telling them to vote no on this measure. It comes to the floor this Thursday, June the 11th. 
For more information, go to coalitionforastrongamerica.com and let your voice be heard. This has been a special announcement from K98 Talk. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson. I want to take a second to talk to you about one of our newest sponsors, and that's going to be uh, Roberts Auto Group out of Pryor, Oklahoma. They own Roberts uh, Auto, or Roberts, uh, the car lot is uh, Roberts Auto Chevy, Roberts Auto Dodge, and Roberts Auto, or Roberts Ford Lincoln. Uh, basically, they own three dealerships out in the Pryor area. All of them are located there. Um, if you are in the market for a used car, I urge you to contact Ryan. He's one of their sales personnel there. They do uh, boast that they have the best used prices in the state. And if we don't have the car that you're that you're lo- if they don't have the car that you're looking for when uh, you go see them, which is uncommon because they have over two thousand plus cars on the three lots that are available. But if they don't have it, they'll order it and still give you the best possible deal. Um, so at this point, if you are interested in uh, finding a new vehicle, um, at this point you can go to uh, the Roberts Auto Group out of Prior. And hang on just a second. Oh, uh, you can contact... Sorry, that was the part I was looking for. I had his cell phone somewhere in this email and I lost it. You can contact Ryan directly at 918-693-2866. Again, if you're in the market for a used vehicle and you're looking for the best possible deal, head on out to Pryor. Uh, visit the Roberts Auto Group, which can, uh, which is actually a conglomeration of three separate lots. They have 2,000 plus vehicles available. And again, if they can't find or they don't have what you're looking for, they will find it for you and still give you the best possible deal. So hit up Ryan today, 918 693 2866. Tell them K98 and Rick sent you. They'll even give you a discount if you mention us, so make sure that you do that. All right, so at this point, we're now going to get back to the portion of the show that we were on. Thanks again to everybody for listening, and thanks for making K98 Talk the fastest growing station on internet radio. Religious freedom, bless you, pray to Jesus Christ. The press is in our pockets, cause there's no one free. You cannot make a move, now that the NSA can see. Don't expect equality, respect, or fair play. Folks, we are back. We are live. It's America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson, and I know some of you are laughing at me right now because I tried to do a live promo spot, but there's a trick to that. I'm going to grab the audio, edit it up, put some background music behind it, and actually make it a commercial later. So, yeah, there is a method of my madness. Go away. All right. So, what we were talking about before the first break of the show, which honestly will probably be one of the only breaks uh, we take for the first part of the show. We'll probably move the other one to the last half since it's already 6.30 uh, or pretty close. Um, We were talking about TPA, TPP, Fast Track, all that fun stuff, um, and the fact that we must remain vigilant. I, again, cannot say this to you enough. For those of you that are on the front lines, do not give up the fight. Congress is in recess for the weekend. Everything is in play. Everything can change in a moment's notice. We have to keep the pressure. Do not let up. Email them. Call them. Tweet them. Facebook message them. Whatever it is that you have to do, make them understand that we, the American people, do not want TPA, TPP, and Fast Track. Because the only people, the only people that I have seen coming out for this stuff are folks that are involved in big corporate businesses. It's going to kill mom and pop stores everywhere. It's going to kill small businesses. And at some point, there the, the entire there's a good possibility that there will be entire states that turn to ghost towns. Because there are so many of us that don't realize how tied to businesses our economies are. But at the same time, if we give them what it is they want here, they'll have free grounds to leave. We have to reform things here instead of making it easier to take things everywhere else. We need to remain the captain of industry that we once were. And we're not anymore, folks. That is the scariest thing about it. Everybody keeps saying that it's good that we're downsizing, that it's good that technology is making things different and making it harder for people to do this and more difficult for that. 
we are losing the things that make us unique. And we're about to talk about that in a, in this in a separate vein here in just a second. It's kind of a bit of a segue because I have something I want you to listen to and then we're going to talk about it a little bit and then we'll talk about the interesting twist that is kind that this has kind of put everybody in that's more of a a, a, a liberal uh, talk, uh, talking point type person. Let's give this a listen real quick and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Are you African American? I don't, I don't understand the question. It all came crashing down for NAACP Spokane President Rachel Dolezal, who has been portraying herself as a black woman for the past 10 years. Confronted by a reporter, her parents are now calling her out. Ruth Ann and Lawrence Dolezal say their 37-year-old daughter is white. We are her birth parents, and we do not understand why she feels it's necessary to misrepresent her ethnicity. Her ethnicity, the elders say, is Swiss, German, Czech, and some Native American. They provided this photo of Rachel as a young girl on the left. On the right, here's what she looks like today. seemed like she was <clears throat> just doing more of an uh, artistic, expressive representation of her identifying with African Americans by doing her hair and extensions and things like that. Rachel grew up in predominantly white Montana, but her parents say she immersed herself in the black community when she attended college in Jackson, Mississippi. Rachel's parents had also adopted four black children. Rachel has always been interested in ethnicity and diversity, and we had many friends of different ethnicities when she was growing up. So it didn't start with the four adopted children of color. It was uh, probably that added to her passion. Rachel even received a full scholarship to the historically black college, Howard University, which never inquired about her ethnicity on her application. Eyes were popping and jaws were dropping when she walked in to finalize her registration in person. But the Dolezals say they became estranged from their daughter when she began to assume a new black identity. Rachel married an African-American man, Kevin, with whom she had a son, who posted a video about their love. Later, Rachel would post Facebook pictures of one of her adopted brothers as her own son, referred to her natural curls, and identified herself on a job application as part black. As professor of Africana Studies at Eastern Washington University, Rachel was clear. I would definitely say that, yes, I do consider myself to be black. But it was the questionable death threats and reported hate crimes against Rachel and her family, which led to an investigation and questions about her race. In January, the Spokane chapter of the NAACP posted a picture of Dolezal standing beside this black man who Rachel claimed was her father. She said he couldn't visit Spokane because he was battling lung cancer. Is that your dad? Yeah, that's, that's my dad. All right, so there you have uh, an expose type story on this young lady who was actually part of the chapter of the NAACP in Spokane. Um, see, here's the here's the interesting thing, because if this was an older or a lady who suddenly decided she was going to have some sort of a sex change and decided that she wanted to become a scout leader. Everybody would have a different story and a different reaction. And that's what disturbs me because let's be real for a second. For all of you that were out there when Caitlin or the Jenner formerly known as Bruce suddenly announced that he or she now was going to live the rest of her life as a woman, you started touting how brave she was and how she deserved all this recognition for for doing what she's done and let's be real clear I'm I I, <coughs> I could give two craps about Caitlyn Jenner what I do care about is the fact that there were people that actually deserved the award that she received for actual real heroism and acts of bravery what I care about is there are people in other parts of the world that make those same decisions that Caitlyn Jenner Caitlyn Jenner has made that truly risk their lives every day when they leave their homes those are people that, does, that if you if you're on that side of the argument, then those should be the people 
they are they you would think they would say would d deserve recognition for courage and and things of that nature but here's the thing now we have somebody who basically says i consider myself black from what i can see here it seems like she's always considered herself black because her children are parents we're talking about as soon as she uh went away to college she completely immersed herself in black uh, community so how do we know that she doesn't feel like she should have been born black how do we know that she doesn't feel like that god made a mistake that she may look white on the outside but she's black on the inside so she's living her life the way that she's always felt. Shouldn't these be the same people now touting her bravery? The same ones that touted it for Caitlyn Jenner. But, or Caitlyn Jenner. But no, they're not doing that. They're all like, oh my god, I can't believe a former uh, high-ranking official in the NAACP in Washington State would pretend that she was black when she was really white. Oh, that's so terrible. That's so despicable. Really, you people need to make up your damn minds. It's the same argument. The same argument, but the same argument with a little bit of a different twist, and all of a sudden you're looking at this lady like she's crazy. When we're the same ones that are looking at you guys going, hey, look, you know, uh, cutting off your junk, yeah, probably not the best move. And it might actually be a little bit psychological, a bit of a psychological issue. I mean, you know, if you, if you I mean, come on. I, I know I know it can be confusing. I know, I know it really can, but to... to paraphrase some or to borrow something that jason said the other night on according to me when i was producing uh, I, I know it's confusing but if you look down and you got a twig and berries pretty good call that you were born a guy probably supposed to be born a guy but what i don't understand is for the because for those of you that are like oh god makes mistakes all the time this person should have probably been born a woman and now she's courageously become a woman and she can live her, live her life the way that she needed to live her life and she should have been allowed to live her life this entire time but society was so cruel to her and now you have this lady who was born white but always felt more comfortable with black people and associated with black people and related to black people so at some point along the way she decided she was black but oh my god that's a lie Every single one of you that are calling this woman a liar for doing what she's done are being completely hypocritical. I myself am calling her a liar because I've never told you that I thought it was great that Caitlyn, Jennings or Caitlyn Jenner all of a sudden decided she wanted to be a woman. I'm telling you right now, there's an ulterior motive there, and it's going to come out soon enough. And when it does, I'm not going to say I told you so, but I might laugh a lot. I mean, come on. How can we as a society be as hypocritical as we've become because it's the same argument it's like the same thing that that jason uh talked about on wednesday night with this whole new trans abled movement where you know people that have functional parts of their body feel like maybe it shouldn't be working or maybe they feel guilty because it works when other people's don't so they're doing things to disfigure themselves shouldn't you guys be touting that and saying hey these people feel like they were born different than everybody else, and they're making that happen, man. That is awesome. Shouldn't you be touting that? Shouldn't you be touting this this young lady who, again, was born white, but associates with being black, and she did something about it, damn it. She became black. The whole world thought she was black. She did it. She rolled with it, baby. She got it done. And now every single one of you are like, oh my god, she's such a liar. That's terrible. Why should? Why would a white person, why, why would that happen? Why would they do that? I mean, seriously, what the hell, people? Why is it that when it's something that you can support, you're the first one to be like, oh, anybody who doesn't like this is a homophobe or they're transgender a phobe or whatever the hell else they want to call it but oh this lady does the same damn thing but just from a different perspective and everybody comes unglued there's lots of us that are coming unglued about it because it is a lie she committed fraud plain and simple she committed fraud but i don't understand why all you guys on the left are doing this are, are so up in arms about it because it's the same damn 
thing. I mean, seriously. If she feels like she should have been born black, who are we to stand in her way? Isn't that your argument? When it's the other way around, when Bruce Jenner is, oh, I've always felt more like a woman. Really, that surprises me since you have children and grandchildren. At some point, you felt like a man for at least 30 seconds. I'm sorry, and I know this is going to get me hate mail, but this is one of the reasons why I cannot get past the argument that it is a choice. Because I know plenty of people that are homosexual that were with women first and the equipment worked properly. I can understand being attracted to both. You know, I mean, that's polyamorous. I mean, if you're attracted to everybody, hey, you know, whatever floats your boat. But this whole, well, I did all this with my wife because it was... It, it it was a cover. It was a beard. It was, and that's what they call it. It's, it's called a beard, um, because it it hides the fact that th they're not who they're pretending to be. And I could see that to a point, except for obviously at some point, she's managed to get you excited, which would seem not plausible, since you claim to not be attracted to women. Really confused by that. All right, so I can already feel the hate mail starting to roll in. Anybody who wants to shoot me some, feel free. Go right ahead. It's uh, Rick at K98Talk.org. Tell me what a racist, homophobic scumbag I am. I love it when you guys do that. I actually got one of those not too long ago. I, I may actually go back to reading email on the air again just because it's fun. <sighs> All right, so at this point, it is about time for us to go ahead and take our last break of the show. We'll be right back, and we're down to the last few minutes, and then we will finish up. As soon as I find the right stuff. All right, folks, this is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Do not go away. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. This is Misty, owner of Waxit Studio in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I'm here to talk to you about a skincare product called Theramedics. Theramedics has a wonderful line of products from anti-aging to hyperpigmentations all the way to acne. In fact, everyone at some point in our lives is affected by acne. Acne can cause a great deal of embarrassment and anxiety. And in order to prevent and help other people, I have tapped into this wonderful product called Theramedics. Visit my website at www.prettyskindeep.com. Again, that's www.prettyskindeep.com. Now's the time to get involved. The Coalition for a Strong America is the only conservative grassroots organization meeting with congressmen and high-level staffers on a regular basis. Stephanie Scruggs, co-chairman, is concerned about the upcoming TPA vote. First of all, what you need to know is that Fast Track TPA is a bill before Congress where Congress gives their power to negotiate international trade agreements and treaties to the president. She recommends contacting your representative and telling them to vote no on this measure. It comes to the floor this Thursday, June the 11th. For more information, go to coalitionforastrongamerica.com and let your voice be heard. This has been a special announcement from K98 Talk. Cause we got a pen and telephone about this all you lost. Political correct 
Jesus will replace the bill of rights Support religious freedom bless you pray to Jesus Christ The press is in our pockets cause it's no longer free You cannot make a move now that the NSA can see Don't expect equality, respect for fair play The IRS will target those who vote the wrong way all right, folks, we're back. We're live. We're into the last 15 minutes of the show. We're going to go ahead and change gears again because I think I've ran it about the whole transgender America thing or the, I'm sorry, uh, transracial America, which will be one of the next new movements, I promise you. It, it's going to happen. There are going to be more folks that have come out like this lady because we now give everybody five minutes of fame when they say God made a mistake. That's what they're looking for. When they can stand up in front of the world and say, I feel like God or Buddha or whoever it is that you want to say created the universe made a mistake. Even if it's the universe itself. The fact that we could legitimately sit here and say that mistakes were made. I understand that there are arguments to be made for that because there are people that are born with disabilities. There are people who have disabilities uh, later in life due to dormant genetic issues, things like that. But I honestly do not personally feel that God makes mistakes. If you were created in a particular way, you were done, it was. It happened so that you could serve a purpose of some sort. You may not understand what it is at the time, but that's, that's, that's the whole point. Okay, now, enough about that, because again, the, the whole thing is just crazy to me that the whole left is like up in arms over this lady who pretended to be black when we have people that are like, oh my god, I was born a woman, I was, should have been born a woman, or I should have been born a man. Oh, we should take pity on these people. We should love them and accept them because they're born differently. Oh wait, you're a woman who pretended to be black when you're white? Oh my god, somebody should kill you. I mean, really, that, that's kind of where we are right now, isn't it? One is okay, the other's not. I'm sorry, but in my opinion, they're both not okay. At least my stance makes sense. You can call me whatever name you want, but my stance at least makes sense. I tell you, no, I'm not going to judge you about it, but I don't think homosexuality is right. You are free to live your own life. It doesn't impact me. I don't think that the transgender lifestyle is appropriate because there's too many studies that I'm starting to look into that's, that show me that things usually wind up being even worse for them after they make those changes and a lot of the people that make those decisions wind up committing suicide that means it cannot possibly be a healthy decision for the mind let's be honest and now we have this lady who's like oh i'm black NAACP black power oh no really i was born white but i didn't want you to know that because i've always uh, identified more with black culture so, um, again, at least my stance makes sense because I tell you every last one of them are crazy. Yes, I said it. And that doesn't mean that I don't have people that I know that are in, that, that are. I'm just telling you that especially when it comes to transgender, I do believe that as a psychological disorder. And there are plenty, or there's at least a couple of uh, pretty renowned psychologists that actually agree with me. So call me whatever you want. And again, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just giving you my opinion. I call, I'm, I'm as crazy as anybody else, so I'm allowed to call other people crazy. Because everybody's, I mean, come on. Let's be real for just a second when it comes to the definition of, ins of insanity. When it comes to the people that have cited what was normal psychological behavior... These are all people that were heavily into drugs. Freud, for one. I mean, come on. A bunch of stoned out people are the ones that told us what normal is. Okay, I, I'm not buying it. So, you know, just because I call somebody else crazy doesn't mean I don't readily accept the fact that I'm pretty damn well insane myself when it comes right down to it. Because we all have things about us that other people would consider crazy. All right. Now that being said, we've got to change gears again because we're down to about the last five minutes, and I don't want—I don't want you to be under the impression that we can let this go. So, again, so far we have a, we have a holding action in place. We have managed to stop TPP, TAA, and TPA for the moment because while TPP passed just barely. Eight votes, eight votes, 
which basically means we had nine nozzles from the Republican Party who said, yeah, this is a good idea. Go home. Pack your stuff, get out of D.C., and go home because you do not belong there. When you are willing to sell out the people that sent you to D.C., and I'm not talking about the ones that footed the bill for you. I'm talking about the ones that pulled the lever for you because you told them you were going to go there and make a difference. And two of you know exactly who I'm talking to right now. You told us you were going to go to D.C. to make a difference. The only difference you've made is finding ways to line the pockets of the people that paid your bills to get you there. And that disgusts me. And you know who you are. I am so disappointed with some of you right now because two of you got to D.C. in the Tea Party movement. And as soon as you had a chance, you threw them under the bus and aligned yourself with big business in the biggest freaking way possible. It is time to draw the line in the sand. This is where we stop. We will go no farther. Period. If we have bipartisan support for the fact that TPA, TPP, and TAA are bad for America, then we need to make these nozzles in DC realize that we are the ones that make the rules. Because if this passes, One of the things that they keep saying that is going to be good for America if this passes is we will have the ability to make the rules because at some point China will become involved in this even if we don't. Fine, let them. They already control more money than we do. They've been maneuvering behind the scenes to build up all of these other little banks. Now they have like a bazillion dollars. He who holds the money makes the rules. It's not going to matter what we do. Unless we stand firm, unless we tell them no, and I don't even mean no. At this point, it's time for a resounding hell no. This far, no further. I want my country back. You have to apply pressure. We have to do it. We have to stand up now. We have to stop this because if we fail, if we falter, and if this passes, we are done. The country that we know and love will be no more because we will become pawns of a world court. Laugh at me all you want. I know some of you right now, because I have liberals that listen to the show all the time because I get hate mail from you every single day. And some of you are laughing your asses off at me right now and calling me a tea party or or, or tea partier and or a tea bagger or a tinfoil hat wearer. Well, I have to tell you the truth. I have I aligned myself with some of the Tea Party stuff, but I'm going to tell you right now, I am a conservative. I am a small government as close to no government as possible conservative because government is a monster that does nothing but feed itself and this is evident right here right now in this moment we have people that told us they were going to go to DC to represent what we wanted and what we needed from America and they are selling us to the rest of the world lock stock and barrel and we have to stop it i urge you now call your congressman if you haven't done it yet make a twitter account if you don't have one everybody that is anybody has a freaking twitter account it doesn't matter if it's one of their staffers that read it or if it's their wife that reads it they're gonna get the message so put the pressure on these people and make them understand that we will not stand for this We have abdicated our responsibilities far too long, and it is time that we, the American people, stand up. And as of now, we have the opportunity to do that. We have the opportunity to exercise the rights and the freedoms that were given to us in our Constitution by our Founding Fathers, which are some of the best best people in our history, some of the best, brightest, smartest people in our history, And we are selling their ideals down the river for money. This sickens me. We have to wake up. We no longer have a choice. So I urge you today, if you don't know what to do or you don't even know where to start, go to the Coalition for for a Strong America.com. 
live radio, shut up. Um, go to their website. There are all kinds of links in there that you can use. There's ways that they can help you get the information that you need to be able to do this. Tell people what's going on. If you are with are listening to me, you are one of the only people, other than about 8,000 others of you, usually in about a weekly basis, that know everything that's going on that, that we talk about on this station. So you need to get the word out. Period. End of discussion. No longer an option. This is it. If this passes... We are done. I cannot say it enough, which is why I've said it over and over and over again. This will be the end of our country because this will put us under the authority of a world court. We will no longer have our sovereignty because let's let's let me let me draw you a picture right now. This is what a lot of people don't understand. Treaties, trade agreements, agreements between countries. Those are put in our constitution. Those are put at the same level as our Constitution. That's why so many of our founding fathers warned against blindly entering into treaties and trade agreements. Because this isn't really a trade agreement. That's what it's being labeled as, but it's basically a treaty. It's a treaty between a bunch of different countries. As I say, we're going to follow the rules of this particular place over here, and we're going to bring everybody on the, the same level playing field. Anytime they start using the words level playing field, it's time to run away. Anytime the Obama administration thinks that something's a good idea, it's time to run away. Yes, I'm borrowing from you again, Eric. Hope you don't mind. But, I mean, come on. Seriously, people. We have got to do something or we are done. So, again, so many of us, and me, not even as many as some others, are fighting this fight on a daily basis. We're, they're in it. And they're in it to win it because if we don't win this, we've, we're done. I mean, I say this every show, but this is never, never more important than it is right now. It's time to put down the remote. It's time to get off the couch and it's time to get involved because if we don't do something now, there won't be anything left to fight for. We are nearly done. We have slept too long. We have slept too long. We have blindly slumbered while those who craved power have worked behind the scenes to make sure that they got to keep it. And if we do not stand up now, and if we do not wake up now, it will be over. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this particular episode of America Off the Rails. Again, I cannot urge you enough. You have to get involved. You have to do it. You don't have any options anymore because if we don't stand up now, there won't be anything left to stand up for. When there are so many of us with so many differing ideologies that are telling you this is terrible, you need to understand just how terrible it is when I'm willing to tell you that I, that I agree with Nancy Pelosi and Bernie Sanders. You need to understand exactly how terrible this, po this could possibly be for the country if I... I'm willing to stand up with people that up until now I have looked on with complete and total befuddlement and tell you this is a bad idea. I'm sorry, but if you're not scared at this point, you're not paying attention. We have got to keep the pressure on and we have got to keep it up because if we lose on Monday, it will be the beginning of the end, I promise you. All right, folks, I'm done for the night. I'll be with you tomorrow live on Finding Common Ground right here on K98 Talk at 9 Central, 10 Eastern. Bryce, the normal liberal co-chair, is away for the weekend again. So Steve Long, host of Liberty Unfiltered and host of Off the Record over on K98X, will be joining me tomorrow morning. I hope we haven't touched base this week yet, but he said he would last week, and I've got him on tape, so I'm going to hold him to it. All right, folks, I'm out of here. You have a good night. Again, don't forget, we have to put on the pressure. If we don't keep up the pressure, we're going to lose everything.
game over, man. It's game over. 